Hi, welcome, this is Dr. Barry. In this video, I wanna give you some recommendations that I have for supplements. Uh, I haven't talked about this before. It can be very important depending on what kind of diet you're eating. So let's talk about supplements, which ones you should take and which ones are a waste of money. But first, before we do that, please take one second and click the subscribe button. You see it right down there? If you click that and click the little bell button right beside it, you'll get a notification. Every time I have a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first to know. So supplements, let's talk about this. If you eat the standard American diet or anything close to it, then you're deficient in multiple minerals and vitamins, and that can be a very big deal for your long-term health. Not having the proper amount of vitamins and minerals in your diet is not going to kill you today or tomorrow. And that's why it's so um, misleading to some people. They're like, well, I mean, I feel pretty good. I don't, I don't really think I'm deficient in anything. But the problem is, is being a little deficient in some of these vitamins and minerals can lead to slow but sure deficits in performance and slow but sure disease later in life. And once you've gotten to the disease point, you cannot hit the rewind button and go back and start taking that supplement that you should have been taking 20 years ago. That's the problem with this. There have been a few research studies that come out that have said, oh, supplements are a waste of money or they might actually increase your risk of disease. But if you read carefully into these studies, you realize that they either gave the participants of the study a tiny, tiny amount of the vitamin or mineral, much, much less than any expert would ever say that would benefit a human, or they give them some um, um, concoction of the mineral or vitamin that can't be absorbed by the human body. And then they act, they act like they're surprised that it had no effect. So many of these studies, you just can't put any faith in because they don't really study the true question, which is if you take the right amount of the right kind of supplement, will that help you? That would be a great study if someone would fund that and do that, uh, but that hasn't happened yet. Okay, so let's talk about these supplements. I've got eight that I wanna tell you about. Some you've probably heard of, but uh, some you may not have heard of. I'll bet the very last one you haven't heard of at all, at least not most of you anyway. Number one is vitamin D. I'm a big proponent of vitamin D. I may, you may have heard videos of me talking about vitamin D before. It's a huge deal. It's not only a vitamin, but it's also a pro or a pre-hormone. It's, it's responsible for the correct uh, reaction of thousands of biochemical reactions in your body. All of your sex and gender hormones kind of come indirectly or directly from vitamin D. So it's a big, big deal. You can get vitamin D from the sun, but if you don't live between the tropical of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer, you pretty much have to stay outside all day in your Speedo to get enough sunlight. And your, your neighbors may or may not appreciate that, depending on you and your neighbors. But so for most adults taking anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day, really helps get their levels back up into the upper limit of normal, which is where you want to be. There's multiple research studies that shows that this helps prevent infection and may even very well prevent cancer. Um, a lot of the chronic diseases happen the further you get from the equator. One of the theories is that this is because as you go further and further from the equator, the sun is exponentially weaker and weaker, and therefore you just don't get as much vitamin D. So vitamin D is number one on the list. Number two is magnesium. Many, many adults are deficient in magnesium. Unlike vitamin D, which you can check a blood test for, and it shows readily, oh yes, you're very low in vitamin D. Magnesium is so tightly controlled by your biochemistry that if, you're, if it shows low in your blood, you're in trouble. You really, really are deficient in it. You can store it in your, on your own blood cells. You can store it in your bones in different places. And so your body will pull from those places rather than let the level be low in your bloodstream. I recommend for most people either magnesium citrate or magnesium glycinate. They're both pretty uh, inexpensive. If you have lots of trouble with constipation, then magnesium citrate would be the better choice. Otherwise, magnesium glycinate. Take anywhere from 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams a day. Most people should take this at bedtime because it will tend to make you a little drowsy. And me, I've had many patients who have chronic insomnia 
report that it gets so much better when they start taking a bedtime dose of magnesium glycinate. And there are other formulations of magnesium. If you like one that you're already taking, as long as it's uh, absorbable and it has enough in it, then that's fine. The next is omega-3 fatty acids. Now, if you're eating a good ketogenic diet with good quality meats, you're probably getting enough omega-3s. You can also get omega-3s from some seeds and nuts and other plant sources, uh, but you almost have to be eating a ketogenic diet or a, a paleo diet, heavy, heavy in fat to be getting enough omega-3s. A lot of people choose to just take an omega-3 supplement and it needs to be in fish oil. Most uh, adults need anywhere from two to three grams a day of omega-3 in a, a fish oil capsule. It usually comes in a big gel cap. Uh, it needs to be a, a fish source and not a vegetable source typically, but the vegetable source is way better than nothing. Uh, those are all those I've talked about so far are pretty uh, affordable. Okay. Now the next one's very important. If you take any prescription medications whatsoever, you've heard of coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. Your body makes this naturally. As you get older, your body tends to make less of it. But also many people do not realize that if you take a cholesterol lowering medication or a blood pressure lowering medication or a diabetic medication, those also low, lower your coenzyme Q10 levels in your bloodstream. And so a lot of people as they get older just need some CoQ10 anyway. For most adults, 100 to 200 milligrams a day. But if you're taking a handful of prescription medications, you definitely need to take CoQ10 every day. And I tell my patients to take anywhere from 100 to 200 milligrams per prescription pill. So if you're taking a cholesterol pill and two blood pressure pills and a, and a pill for diabetes, four pills a day, you should take anywhere from 600 to 800 milligrams of CoQ10 a day. Uh, and that's that's a big deal. Your heart needs coenzyme Q10. Many, many other tissues in your body need that. And it's depleted if you have a crappy diet, but it's also uh, depleted if you take uh, more than one uh, prescription medication. OK, so CoQ10. Next is zinc. Some women need a little zinc. Uh, a lot of times if you get older and you can't smell or taste food as well as you once uh, did, a lot of times that's evidence of a uh, zinc deficiency. And so for most people, taking 25 to 50 milligrams a day is plenty of zinc. Some people, 50 is a little too much. Depends on your body size and your gender. But now if you're a male and you're trying to uh, keep your testosterone levels as high as you can keep them either with treatment or without treatment, taking 50 milligrams of zinc a day is a very good idea because it tends to push any of the testosterone that bleeds over into the estrogen pathway. It tends to push that back into the, the testosterone pathway, which tends to keep your testosterone levels higher on average. Now, taking a zinc once a day is not going to put your testosterone level back up to normal. If it's very low, you're going to have to optimize that with the, the help of a good doctor. Uh, but the zinc will definitely help keep it moving towards testosterone and away from estrogen, which is a good thing for a man. The next one on the list is number seven, a B complex. If you're eating a good meat heavy diet, you probably don't need the B complex vitamin supplement. Uh, if you're a vegetarian or if you're eating, if you just can't afford the really good quality meats and you're having to just get by with what you get by on, uh, if you're having to eat a hot dogs and potted meat, you probably need a B12, a B complex vitamin once a day. And the way to judge how much of it to take is to look at the B12 portion and just take a thousand micrograms a day, not a thousand milligrams, but a thousand MCG of the B12 portion. And then that'll tell you how much of the rest that you need. Um, your B12, you're not going to take too much of. If you take too much, you'll just pee out any extra. Now, the last one that you may not have ever heard about before, it's, which it looks like is becoming a bigger and bigger deal, uh, is vitamin K2. And you may have heard about this from some, some of the other experts that you watch, but more and more, I'm seeing that this is actually quite a big deal. Um, and you, there's several different kinds of K2, and you should take the MK4 uh, version of it. There's an MK7 and some others, but if you'll take 200 micrograms, 200 MCGs of the uh, vitamin K2, MK4 once a day, that's going to help you to have stronger bones. 
And it's probably a true, true statement. I heard a guy the other day say that if everybody in America uh, took a vitamin D and a vitamin K2 supplement starting at about 35, 30, 35, if they needed it, that there'd probably be no such thing as osteoporosis in America. And that's that plus daily uh, weight bearing or weight uh, bearing exercise, he would probably be right. It'd probably be a very, very rare person who would have osteoporosis if they took their vitamin D three and their vitamin K2 every day. Um, if you have any questions about these vitamins I've talked about today, please leave a comment down below. I try to answer every comment. If you're taking a supplement I did not mention, then please leave a comment and, and say, hey, what about this smart guy? Should I be taking this or not? And we'll, I'll, we'll discuss that in the comments. I love answering questions like that because so often You'll be you'll get on autopilot taking some supplement thinking you need it. And really, in reality, it's either not doing you any good. It's wasting your money or worse. It's actually could be harming your health. Uh, there are lots of different opinions about supplements. And there are also every one of you guys is unique. And so what might be good supplement advice for one of you guys might not necessarily be dangerous for another one, but it could be a waste of money. And so if you have any questions, please, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer every one. Um, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like them, please share this on your social media. It just helps me reach people who otherwise would never hear these messages and, and just wouldn't know any better. Like the other day, we were talking about calcium supplements and how they're completely unnecessary and may actually be harmful for your health. If people never hear that message, they'll just keep taking the calcium supplement every day and not know any better. But you can help me educate them by sharing this on your social media. If you really want to help me get more of these videos out and, and help me work on the next book that I'm working on right now, I have a Patreon account. You can go in for as little as a buck a month. You can help me have more time in my day to work on these videos and these books and these other projects that I'm working on to help you guys. Okay. This is Dr. Barry. I will see you next time.